Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Play Barbecue, and boy, do I have a treat for you guys and gals. On today's video, I'm going to be smoking a brisket in my 1962 Weber kettle. Stay tuned. All right, let's get started on this monster brisket. I'm starting with a 22 and a half pound brisket. I picked this up at Costco the other day and all they had was these giant briskets. So I got a pretty decent one. And obviously I'm gonna trim this down to fit on the Weber kettle. And I did run into a local subscriber at Costco. I didn't catch the guy's name, but very nice to meet you and great talking to you. And thanks for bringing a subscriber to my channel. All right, let's start trimming this big boy right here. One of the nice things about buying a big brisket like this is I'm going to trim it down to a smaller size, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to be okay. And I also use a lot of this trim to make sausages. So I'm not too worried about this excess trim. I'd like to start with the deckle. Just take this off. Man, look at that marbling on this brisket. That is looking nice. Now I just sharpened this knife, if you guys haven't seen that sharpening video that a lot of you guys were asking for. It is slicing through this brisket with no problem. I like to start with the deckle and then just start trimming the surface of the brisket. I like to get rid of a lot of the silver skin and some of the chunks of fat. Little trick is put your hand on the bottom of the brisket just to raise that piece that you're trimming Makes it a little bit easier. All right, so this point definitely needs some trimming. I'm gonna trim this down quite a bit. All right, so the top of the brisket looks good. So at this point, I'm gonna trim the edges. And let me see what I got here. All right. So starting back here, Take a little bit more off here. All right, so I'm also gonna square the tip of this brisket off. It's a little bit angled right here. So I'm just gonna straighten it up a little bit. And again, this meat does not go to waste since I make so much sausage. All right, so on this side, it's usually thinner and it's actually cut right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and round this off just a bit here. So just take a little bit off this edge as well. All right, so this brisket has a pretty good sized mohawk here. I'm just gonna trim this down a bit. All right, so I'm just gonna trim up this other side of the brisket. Now I want about a quarter of an inch of fat on the top. All right, so that's about it on the trim. Great looking brisket here. So I'm gonna be smoking this fat cap up on my 1962 Weber kettle. And I do have my grate here. Just to see if it's gonna fit, I'm gonna measure this. And man, it looks just about right. Yeah, we're gonna roll with that. All right, let's make our seasoning. I'm using two cups of black pepper. This is a coarse black pepper. One cup of kosher salt. I'm using Morton's kosher salt. And four tablespoons of granulated garlic. Real simple homemade SPG. You've got a good mix. All right, so I had a little SPG left over from my last cook. Just fill up your shaker bottle. All right, let's season up our brisket. I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard as a binder. I love using mustard as a binder. As I've mentioned in a lot of my videos, I feel that mustard really grabs a hold of the rub and you get a really nice bark on your brisket as well. Now you can go either way. If the surface of the brisket is nice and moist, 
you can do without a binder. But again, I've got pretty good luck using mustard. All right, let's apply our seasoning, some of our SPG. Pat your rub down and don't forget your edges. All right, let's season up the fat cap side. So I am trimming this and seasoning this the night before. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna show you guys my 1962 Weber kettle that I have been wanting to smoke on for over a year now. I haven't cleaned it, so tomorrow morning I'm gonna wash it, put a brand new grate on it, and go to town. All right, this brisket is looking proper. We will see you guys tomorrow morning. All right, so it's the very next morning, and here's my 1962 Weber kettle. This is exactly how I found it. This was actually sitting in a pile of scrap metal about to go to the scrap yard, and I actually saved it. I ran into this older man and said, hey, what are you gonna do with that grill? He said, we're fixing to take it to the junk pile, and I asked him if I can have it, and he gave it to me. The overall shape isn't bad. It still has the metal wheels. Now, these wheels had actual rubber on them, but that rubber is completely gone and it's got some scratches and dings and dents but i think that makes this grill pretty unique let's take a look at the inside all right let's take a look at the inside of the kettle now this still has all the dirt that i found on it uh, the vent still works but the tab is bent a little bit but that's okay and the handle is beat up pretty good so i'm not sure if this is the original grill grate but it looks like it it's heavy duty and they don't make them like this anymore i can tell you that right now it's a little rusty so i'm not going to be using this and here's our charcoal grate at the very bottom and this thing is beat up probably the original one and again i haven't opened this since i got it so this is going to the trash probably so the vents on the bottom of the grill are completely gone now i did get new vents new legs a new grate and stuff like that now i'm going to use a new grate on this cook and also the new charcoal grate but i'm going to be rebuilding this grill but before i did that i wanted to use it first so i'm going to wash this grill up a little bit Use some soap and water, scrub it down a little bit, put the new charcoal grate and the new grill grate, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so the grill is washed. Now I did install my slow and sear. I fill it up about halfway with Kingsford blue charcoal. And I've got my new grate installed on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and light up the charcoal on one side only. There we go. And by the way, I am using my grill gun. Check out the links below and get yourself a nice discount on yours. All right, that charcoal is lit. So I'm gonna be using some mesquite chunks to get some nice flavor on this brisket. And here's our beautiful brisket. Should fit in here. Perfect. So I did install a temp probe right here just to monitor my temperatures. Back in 1962, there was no temp gauges on the Weber kettle. All right, let's put our lid on. Vent is going on top of the brisket. There we go. I'm gonna set the top vent about halfway open. And we'll see you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. So three hours later, let's take a look at our brisket and see how we're doing. Oh my goodness, look at that nice color. I gotta tell you, for only three hours, that bark developed extremely nice. So I'm gonna spritz with apple cider vinegar and water, mix it 50-50. The temperature's running at 275, but it did jump up to 325 a couple of times. Man, I am really loving this color. So I'm gonna let this go for a couple more hours. Let that bark continue to develop, and then we'll wrap it up. Stay tuned. All right, so five and a half hours into our cook, let's go ahead and wrap our brisket. I got a really nice dark bark. Check that bark out. That's five and a half hours using mesquite chunks right there. That bark is looking mighty fine. So I'm gonna spritz the brisket and the butcher paper. So I like to spritz the butcher paper just so it becomes a little bit more pliable. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this baby up.
So I do want the fat cap up once I put it back inside my Weber kettle. So the fat cap is down, fat cap is up, and this extra butcher paper, just fold it and tuck it on the bottom of your brisket. Just like that. Nice and tight. This is going back on my Weber. We'll pull it off when it hits over 200 degrees and it's nice and tender. Stay tuned. I almost forgot, just in case you guys are wondering, the internal temperature of the brisket is 165 degrees. Stay tuned. All right, so we are 10 hours into our cook. Let's take a look at our brisket, get the internal temperature and see what we're sitting at. Now I have added a couple handfuls of charcoal before I wrapped it and after I wrapped it, and it is still rocking about 275 to 300. So let's check the internal temperature here. Ooh, that feels tender. 195 degrees. Let's check that point. All right, the point is not quite as tender. We're sitting at 194 degrees, but boy, that flat feels good. So I'm gonna let the brisket continue to cook. I'm thinking another 30 to 45 minutes, and that point is gonna be really nice and tender. At that point, I'll bring you guys back and show you what I'm gonna do to rest this brisket. Stay tuned. All right, so 12 hours later and the brisket is ready. It hit about 202 degrees internal, and it is super tender. So at this point, this is gonna rest on my counter until the internal temperature of the brisket gets to about 160 degrees. Then I'm gonna pop it inside my PK100 smoker where it's gonna rest for about 12 hours and tomorrow morning, we will open it up. Now I do wanna show you guys this brisket and I am gonna be wrapping it back up in this butcher paper. Well, let's check out that bark. Just a little teaser picture, if you will. Man, check that out. I'm not gonna unwrap it completely, but check out that awesome bark. Oh yeah. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this is gonna sit on my counter until the internal temperature hits about 160 degrees. At that point, I'm gonna wrap it back up, pop this back inside my PK100 smoker, where it's gonna rest for 12 hours or so at 150 degrees. I'll bring you guys back at that point. All right, so the brisket has been resting for 13 hours. Let's take a look at it and see how we did. I can tell you that the brisket continued to render once it was inside my PK100 for 13 hours because there's a lot of fat on this tray right here. So let's just unwrap this bad boy. Oh man, it feels tender. Check out that bark. Holy cow, looks like a fossil. Looks like we lost a little bit of bark over here on the point from when I grabbed it because this is really nice and tender up here, but that's okay. It's not gonna affect the flavor of the brisket. So I'm gonna dunk the extra tallow on top of our brisket. Yeah, buddy. All right, let's slice into our Weber kettle brisket and see how we did. I'm gonna go right down the middle, but check this out, man. Super jiggly, and that bark again is pretty darn savage. So I'm gonna slice it probably right around here. And I'm using my Dell Strong slicer. Oh man, ridiculous tender, okay? Oh yes, that is absolute money right there. Check that out, guys. I am gonna squeeze a little bit just to show you guys how juicy it is. Look at that bark. Even on the bottom side, it's pretty darn savage. All right, so I'm gonna take a few slices off of the flat here. Now I'm using my straight edge slicer, but I also have my serrated slicer because I wanna see which one does a better job of slices for briskets. I've always used my straight edge, and it does really nice, but I'm gonna try my serrated knife here. And look at that. All right, here's my serrated knife. All right, so this does break up the bark a little bit compared to my straight edge. Take another slice, yeah. So this breaks up the bark a little bit. Whereas my straight edge really does a nice job 
of not messing with the bark. So straight edge it is. Man, check that out. That fat is nice and yellow. That tells you that it rendered really nicely. Really nice smoke ring. Overall, I am extremely pleased with this Weber kettle brisket. Let's check the tenderness. Oh man, it's like butter. This edge right here is perfect for burnt ends. Really tender. All right, let's go for that money shot. Oh man, look at that. That fat again is nice and rendered, nice yellow color. This is an absolute savage brisket. I'm gonna make myself a brunch sandwich. Stay tuned. All right, let's make ourselves a brisket brunch sandwich. First, I'm gonna start off with some slices of this freshly smoked brisket. Look at that. It's not breakfast unless you have an over easy egg. I got some of my homemade pickled red onions. And how about a few slices of a fresh jalapeno? Put my lid on it. Oh yeah. Check that bad boy out. All right, let's slice this sandwich in half. Oh man, got that yolk action going on. Perfect brisket brunch sandwich. Let's give it a taste. All right, let's give this Weber kettle brisket a try and see how we did. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. This brisket is ridiculous. If somebody told me that this was smoked in an offset, I would believe them. That Weber kettle did an amazing job. Let's try one of these delicious burnt ends. Here we go. Mm. All right, let's give our brisket brunch sandwich a try. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. And that smoke ring, check it out, savage. Here we go. Mm. Wow. I gotta tell you, overall I am extremely impressed with that 1962 Weber kettle. I mean, check out the bark development and that smoke ring on the brisket. This is incredible. So I'm gonna rebuild that 1962 Weber kettle on a future video. That Weber kettle from 1962 has some broken pieces. And I've got some new pieces, so I'm gonna bring it up to date. New legs, new wheels, etc. So look out for that video. I hope you guys enjoyed this Weber kettle brisket video. If this is your first time to my channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, tell a friend and hit that thumbs up. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya. Man, I'm gonna get me another bite of the sandwich. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.